Thanks, Brian. It's super exciting to see how far GPT-5 has come when it comes to coding personality and steerability. I'm really excited to show how great GPT-5 is at front-end coding, where design and aesthetics really matter. So I've got two demos for you today, one for work and one for fun. Let's start with the work example. So imagine you're the CFO of a startup. Um, I have some data that I'd like to visualize about the company. Um, and I'm going to ask the model to make me a dashboard. So um, you'll see here that I'm being specific about the audience. So the target audience is the CFO. Um, it said, you know, create a finance dashboard for my startup. Um, and I've asked it to be beautiful, tastefully designed with some interactivity, um, and to have a clear hierarchy for easy focus on what matters. I've also specified what frameworks it should use. And you can see that it's actually started. It's following my instructions and using um, create next app to make a Next.js project. So totally from scratch. Yeah, exactly. Now, how long do you think this kind of task would take you to take? Or to yeah, e easily at least a couple of days. Uh, I'm not a front end expert. Just to understand the latest frameworks and piece everything together would yeah, easily take me a few days. We'll see how long it takes with the model. Yeah. No, more like um, weeks. Yeah, I think and it, weeks. it's really cool to see that the model is thought for a bit, and it's explaining how it's going to structure the project. So it's talking about how it's going to scaffold a new Next.js app. It's going to use Tailwind CSS. Uh, it's running um, a couple of commands to install dependencies, um, which is cool. Uh, and now it's, um, it's proceeding to um, implement the rest of the project. So while this runs, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we trained GPT-5 to be a great front-end coding model. We tried to follow the principle. All right, so now we're talking, we're in the front end development, front end uh, designers, front end uh, programming, uh, brace for impact. Of giving it good aesthetics by default, but also making it steerable. So if I give the model a concise prompt, it should be able to infer my intent and make something that looks great by default. On the other hand, if I'm specific about a layout or frameworks that I want the model to use, it should follow my instructions precisely. And this makes it the best of both worlds for developers. We also, tr we also train GPT-5 to be much more agentic than previous models. So if you give it a task like this, it will run long chains of reasoning and tool calls and just go to work to build code that is both ambitious and coherent. I like how you said ambitious, because it means it goes above and beyond without going off track or off what you specified. Yeah, exactly. So what we want is the model should adhere to my prompt but also like be, be ambitious and um, go above and beyond when it thinks it can. And so checking in here, um, looks like the model is, uh, is making progress. Um, it's creating a readme file. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, I think it's thinking about how to make the code modular. Um, so it's, it's created like a bar, bar chart component. Um, looks like it's... Uh, Continuing here. I, I love that it doesn't just write the code. It also yeah. really thinks about proper abstractions and documentation and really the whole life cycle of what it is to write software. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not just writing the code like in Sweebench, but it's also communicating about the code and explaining what it's doing. Let's check in to see what's going on. So while, while this runs, um, GPT-5 uh, understands details much better than previous models. So when we trained the model, we taught it to understand details like typography, color, and spacing in a way that just eclipses any previous model we've shipped. Like, I remember with old models, you would have to like, write really specific prompts to get it to do what you want. But GPT-5 just gives you great results by default. So it's been, I mean, they wrote the whole thing. I mean, it's a whole template that it has to run. I mean, after years and years and years of developing these uh, dashboard system websites, interfaces, user experience, user interfaces, colors, letters, and everything. Everything, everything is already out there. All it has to do is take all that and put it into a package and then execute it based on what you want. During testing, we were looking at the A's and B's for different versions of the model to see if it was doing better at UI. And at some point, we stopped being able to tell and actually had to pull in designers to teach yeah. us what was better. Yeah, it was really fast. Also, designers, brace for impact. Designers, web designers, UI, UX, uh, brace for impact, meaning brace this, the technology now. 
fascinating to see the model's aesthetic preferences evolve during training. Um, and like we woke up one day and it was just making these great UIs. How do the model's aesthetic preferences compare to your own? Yeah, I think in general, I feel like the model has better aesthetics than me. Like usually I defer to its judgment. And, and I, I find that like really helpful when I'm trying to make uh -oh. it up. Like I'm not exactly sure how I want it to look, but the model's defaults are, are just great. Yeah, and checking in here, so you can see that the model has actually structured the code into these different components. So it's made a sample data TypeScript file, KPI card, component, revenue chart. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's super modular. And it's thinking about how to not just write code, but write high quality code that can actually be merged. Interesting. Let's see what it spits out. It's taking a while. Feels like it's close. But yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty close. Whatever it's, it's writing uh, right now. Say ambitious. It yeah. would probably <laughs> take months. Yeah, okay, okay cool. Goes, so this is great. awesome. So you can see here that it's actually building the project and streaming errors back to itself. And and this is for me, this was just a profound moment to see that the model could write code, but also run builds, stream the errors back, and iterate on the code. So it's it's able to improve its own code in this sort of self-improvement loop. Which, which is fascinating. And it's definitely a good taste of what the future holds as well, right? Yeah. When you really think about where these models can go and how much they can accelerate developers and kind of all aspects of, of what, what we all collectively do. Yeah, but eventually yeah, they're, exactly. they're just going to take you out of the picture. Nice. It actually just fixed a bug that it found in that previous. That's one of the things they're not talking about because if they talk about it then the whole presentation falls apart but i mean they are programming their self ex extinction i mean they're developing this all stuff that could be templated out packaged um it's recorded it's uh, created and saved archived so they're they are literally dev you know programming coding developing their own way of coming at like projecting themselves to be out of the picture because once that is done and they're finished all you have to do is ask ask it like what you want you don't have to worry about like all this coding and like all the stuff that's being on the screen like rendered and it's it's writing the you know gpt is writing it like the the average person doesn't really care about that they just want the dashboard that he's creating like basically create me a dashboard that i can check finances and check you know all the users and this and that but the code is something that the artificial intelligence can figure out on its own you don't have to go in there and like you know find whatever dot css file it's looking no you're gonna say i don't like this button make it blue and it's gonna do it it's gonna go back to that code and do it build. Okay, cool. Let's nice. Go. Yeah, it looks like it's done. Let's check it out. So I'm going to follow the instructions that I, I don't I don't really know front end. So let me let me see how I should run it. So it's saying CD to the directory and then run npm run dev. So let me do that. Um, and it looks like it's being served on port 3001. So let me just open that port. Ooh. Wow, it's Ooh. alive. Nice. Now, that it what I'm seeing, this this just blew my mind because I know a little a little bit about um, dashboard user interfaces, UX, UI. I actually know a lot about, it, but it, this is incredible. This this would take days, weeks to build, and it just did it in what like four minutes, maybe four minutes. It coded this whole thing, and it's showing. Oh man. Nice. Yeah, so you can see here, let, let's check it out. So um, the model has made me a dashboard. It's telling me like my ARR, cash. Uh, looks like this company is doing pretty well. You can see that <laughs> revenue. Even the guy's choking up because he's, 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 he's realizing like what it just did. It's growing. Um, and the model's added like some interactivity here. So if I hover over a graph, it actually tells me the, the exact value. In the world of development, programming, design, and user interface and experience, looking at this, what it just did, is is actually mind blowing. It's it's an, it's insanity. What's what we're seeing right here for a particular day? 
It would take me like five hours to do that in D3. Yeah, imagine like manually doing this in D3. It's just like... <laughs> now, now, just because it's so easy to take this for granted, could, could you remind the audience what the actual prompt was? Like how much creativity and sort of understanding yeah. your intent was required to accomplish this? So he's going to show you... Now he's going to show you exactly what he wrote. Going back to the beginning. What he wrote in order to achieve what we just saw, the interface. Yeah, it, it's crazy that this, you know, this prompt is so concise and it's able to just give me something that looks beautiful. That's the prompt. So please create a finance dashboard. Da, 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 da. That means nothing. This is like a text message. Anybody can, anybody, I mean, like a, like a business owner can literally just put that. And then just get the thing going, going and running. You're talking about the the elimination of an entire department in the in the technology sector, developers, programmers, and designers, and coders, and it, it it's just taking that whole like a whole sector for a company that perhaps you're paying let's say like a million dollars for you know 10 employees to do this you're saving the company now a mil like a million dollars per year just by eliminating a whole department or maybe just keeping one person because they can do this now uh and, and just not to mention the time it's ta it it would take the depart the the team to create this this platform this dashboard that this guy just created with simple text the time the money it would take in order for it to be created and then executed five minutes that's amazing yeah um it's also you know implemented another graph here uh show, showing our customers um it's also implemented a date picker so i can sort of filter by different dates and visualize data accordingly um yeah, it's even sort of segmented it by cus like uh, by by uh, customer segment, which is cool. Um, so this this is just one example that highlights the power of GPT five. There, there will no longer be excuse for ugly internal applications. Exactly. <laughs> um, let's let's go to the fun demo. Yeah. So I mean, this was pretty fun, but <laughs> even more. Even more, yeah. So um, I have a younger cousin, and I want to make a game for her. So I, I want to make a three D game that incorporates a castle. So you can see my prompt. Um, I'll just kick this off. All right, so now we're in the, we're talking about um, the gaming industry, gaming career path, uh, brace for impact. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, it's always the non-AI part. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, okay, so you can see my prompt. Um, create a beautiful castle. I've included some details like we want people patrolling. So he, that's what he wrote. That's the prompt. Like the, um, he's describing what he wants in the game. Walls, some movement, horses. Um, and I want a mini game where I can pop balloons by clicking on them. And this should make a sound effect. So let me run this in cursor. Um, I'll just paste it in. And um, I'm, I'm going to show um, an example that I've already generated just to save some time. Um, so here is the oh, wow. beautiful castle that the model made. So, so there's the actual game it produced, it, it rendered. It's just wild how, you know, from a concise prompt, the model has this great sense of aesthetics where it's, it's made this like floating rock, um, made a 3D castle. And if you zoom in, you can see like tons of detail, like these guards cannons that are walking firing. around, cannons firing. Do you want to fire the cannons if you click oh, this yes. button? Of course. No. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to? There we go. Yeah, there we go. So you can fire the cannons. Um, you can even chat with the characters. So we'll say hi to Captain Rowan. They have names. They have <laughs> names. Say hello to the merchant. Merchants <laughs> selling some stuff. Uh, what's your favorite song? A Ballad of Banners and Dawns. Mm. Nice. Give me some wisdom. Curiosity is volatile. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Um, mini game. Yeah. Do you guys want to try the mini game? Absolutely. Let's, let's play the mini game. So if you hit this, if you hit this button, you want to try, it, Greg? All right. So you can fire Pop at the these balloons. balloons. Oh wow! All right. Yeah. 
oh no, I'm not good at it. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can ask GPT-5 for some help with it. Yeah, a little experience. Oh, you, you hit one, yeah. yes. I got one. Oh, there we go, we got a sound There's effect. A sound effect. <laughs> These are historically accurate balloons. Yes. <laughs> Did I get a second one That's yet? crazy. And this game is harder than that. That's incredible. <laughs> Hold on, we got a balloon coming. There we go. All right. Nice. I think I should quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> cool. So working with GPT-5 has been really fun and profound for me because for me, this is the first model I've worked with that actually has a sense of creativity. And we're really excited to see how GPT-5 unlocks your creativity. All right, thank you both. This is absolutely amazing.